Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Woodwork for Humans, the series where we do everything right. For instance, a couple weeks ago, I was making this homemade saw vise, and I had to cut a rabbit into this big six-inch piece of rock-hard white oak. So I immediately went to my excellent Dazuki saw to make the cut, and I immediately destroyed the saw, just tore the teeth straight off the thing. What's the takeaway? Well, you can't make every joinery cut with the same saw, especially not a fine dovetail saw like this one. If we're really going to tackle the larger, more complex joints in hardwoods that we're doing in this series, well, we're going to need a better saw. A bigger one that's still fine and precise. So, I bought a pile of reasonably priced tenon saws that anyone can order off the internet, and I spent a week doing nothing but testing them every way I could think of. Now, the sharp-eyed viewer is going to say, oh, Rex, I see you've got a Veritas saw in there. Well, game over. Obviously, that high-tech, high-priced saw, that's got to be the winner. No need to even watch the rest of the video. Well, you're right. This is the best saw. But that still doesn't mean you should buy it. Let me explain. In case you're new to all this, a joinery saw is also called a back saw. It's got a thin plate and a spine or back to keep it straight in the cut. That spine also adds weight, so you can feel when the saw is plumb, and the weight of the saw helps you in the cut. You're not pushing down because gravity is doing that for you. These saws are filed for a rip cut because most joinery is rip cutting, and because small rip teeth handle cross cuts just fine. So we're looking for a thin plate, good back, rip cut, resharpenable, and a comfortable handle. This Spear and Jackson saw looks like an excellent contender. They call it a tenon saw, and that's a good sign that they actually know what we need. It's got a hefty brass back, a thin plate, and a hardwood handle. It's really got everything, except for the grip, which feels like, um, crap. Yes, crap. It feels like crap. But for $45, you can't have everything. Let's get this saw on the bench and see how it handles some actual cutting. Hold on. We can't just start hacking away with this saw. What are we comparing it to? Well, how about we compare it to this excellent George Bishop back saw. I bought this at an estate sale, restored it very carefully, and now it is my go-to back saw. It's on my bench all day long when I'm doing my own work, and it handles 80% of my fine cuts and joinery. Whatever saw we get, we want it to be at least this good. To make it a fair comparison, I threw the little bishop saw into my DIY saw vise and touched up the teeth. I want it cutting like a factory fresh saw. Oh, and you can build this vise for 10 bucks and some scrap wood. I'll link to the build video down in the description. My bishop handles general bench cutting, precise rips for joinery, and accurate little cross cuts. I can have it right on my bench all day long. Now! <laughs> we can get to that Spear and Jackson saw. I get it started with a couple of light pull cuts to form the kerf, and the saw handles well. The brass back is heavy and gives the saw enough weight, and the teeth are aggressive. The final cut is square, but the surface finish is pretty rough. If we compare it to my favorite vintage saw, the Bishop leaves a smooth cut with less torn fiber at the edge. For cutting actual tenons, I hate the Spear and Jackson. The kerf is much too wide, and the saw wanders. It's hard to stay on my line, and the surface finish is very poor. This saw is already out of the game. We need precision and a smooth finish, and this thing just won't deliver. But don't forget about this saw. We're going to come back to it in a few minutes. Looking around online, I thought this crown saw looked good. It's got everything I would look for in a vintage back saw, and at 70 bucks, the price is competitive. I thought there was no way we were going to do any better than this at around this price. But then I figured out that Veritas sells this little wonder for $89, just a few bucks more. The Veritas is a premium tool, and they've taken a high-tech approach. Instead of the folded metal back of a traditional saw, the Veritas has a molded spine that uses polymer resin, glass fiber, and steel for added weight. It's much lighter than any of the other saws, and lots of people get turned off because the thing is so modern. It looks like Batman took up woodworking. I don't care about any of that. I care how it cuts, which is shockingly smooth and easy. I also care about how the handle feels. 
which is good. Obscenely good. Like, I don't ever want to put this thing down. It feels so good, it's almost dirty. There's no way the old-fashioned crown can compete with this thing, right? Honestly, the crown is pretty damn great. It might not have the insane ergonomics of the Veritas, but it has a thin plate and nice teeth. And with the heavy brass back, it moves through the cut with authority. This tool was clearly patterned after good vintage saws, and it shows in the handling and the quality of the cut. The crown did come coated in some kind of heavy lacquer, and I tried to get it off with paint thinner and a paper towel, but later I ended up taking off the handle and getting aggressive with steel wool and more solvent to get it all off. Don't expect good performance until all the crap is off the saw. Okay, now we have two saws that both cost roughly the same and deliver excellent results. Enough testing. Let's actually cut a joint and fit it up. I switched between the two saws while I ripped tenon cheeks and cross-cut shoulders. The Veritas left a cleaner surface, but the crown was faster, and its cuts were just as good as my favorite vintage saw. Both saws left surfaces that still required some pairing with a broad chisel, but that's just part of the process. Once I chiseled out the mortise and paired it smooth, the tenon went right in for a snug fit. You would hardly need glue to keep this thing together. When you're looking at the actual results of these two saws, it's tough to tell which tool made which cut. They're both really good. But the Veritas is so thin and light, it got me wondering, could you even cut dovetails with this thing? I did this joint pretty quick, but the Veritas sliced right through my tails in walnut and did just as well with my pins in a thick chunk of maple. I did do a little chiseling, but the joint popped right together. No trouble. So between the crown and the Veritas, we have two excellent saws that cost roughly the same. Which one should you buy? Well, the Veritas is the better of the two. It has insane ergonomics and an incredibly smooth cut. And it's fine enough that you can also cut dovetails with it. If you don't have any joinery saws, get the Veritas and don't look back. You'll never regret it. Now, this is not technically a tenon saw. It is a rip carcass saw. I'm not going to get into a whole discussion of what that means. Let's just call it a small tenon saw. Veritas, of course, also makes a full-size tenon saw, but it's a lot more expensive. It comes in at $140. For that amount of money, you could pretty much buy both of these saws. Now, the crown is bigger and heavier. It's still a fine cutting saw, but it's got a lot more power, and it'll get you through the cut more easily, especially in big pieces of dense hardwood. This thing is not a dovetail saw, but maybe you don't need a dovetail saw. Maybe you already have a fine joinery saw, like a Dazuki to handle the small stuff. If you've already got that, pick up a larger saw like the Crown and you'll have everything covered. I feel very confident in telling you to buy either of these saws. Heck, buy them both. You'll be able to do pretty much everything. But then, then you're spending $160 on saws. That's a lot of money. That is. That is not the woodwork for humans way. If only... If only there was some other option, something really cheap that we could buy and fix up and modify and completely make over and squeeze out every last drop of value to make a decent tool. If only something like that existed. Okay, fine. Here's the thing about the Spear and Jackson saw. The materials are honestly great. The plate is thin and straight. The brass back is really thick. The handle is real beach. They call it a tenon saw, but everything in the packaging shows this saw cutting trim and miters. These are cross-cut operations. Swear to God, I think the people who made this saw don't get that a tenon saw is a rip saw. This thing just isn't sharpened right. And the handle sucks. And the handle's not removable. But this is all fixable stuff. So let's fix it. I'm gonna come back to you in a couple of weeks with a full makeover of this saw. We're gonna resharpen it, carve a new handle, replace the hardware, everything. Let's see just how much we can squeeze out of this tool. I bet we can make it a lot better. In the meantime, if you wanna get straight to work, I've got links down in the description for all of the saws I covered in this video. And you can also sign up for my free 
e-newsletter. It's called Fabrication First. It comes out on the first of every month, and I have a long article tackling some aspect of woodworking and fabrication. For instance, this month I'm talking about, wait for it, I'm talking about cheap tools and how to spend the right money on them. You can sign up for that newsletter. It comes out once a month, and you can click the link down in the description to start getting it. It is spam free, I promise. And just like always, I have to remind you that these videos are only possible because of my patrons on Patreon. They provide the funding that allows me to do crazy things like buy a pile of saws that I do not need. I have plenty of saws. I don't need any of this stuff. But because of them, I can buy these, I can test them, and I can be pretty unbiased because I didn't have to depend on some manufacturer to give them to me. And nobody's paying for this video. Oh, wait, someone is paying for this video. You are, if you're a patron or a channel member. So if you'd like to be a part of the incredible community of craftspeople that makes this content possible, go on over to patreon.com slash Rex Kruger. You get early access to all my videos, free plans, articles, blog posts, all sorts of stuff. It's a lot, but it's the least I can do for the people who make this content possible. And honestly, I feel just as strongly about my viewers the people who are watching these videos with me every week. I appreciate you guys a lot. Thanks for watching.